let's have a conversation. Let's say that I have this polynomial function, right? And I ask you to find the solution or find the zeros for this polynomial. What you would do is you would set the y value equal to zero. Then you would either factor this or use the quadratic formula. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and factor this. So I'm trying to find something, multiply to get seven, add to get negative eight. And I hate the way that I drew that eight, so I'm gonna rewrite it, no problem. That would be negative seven and negative one. So x minus seven, x minus one, right? And then to find our solutions, our zeros, we would set each one of these equal to zero, and then we would solve. We get one of the answers is positive seven, and then the other answer would be x is equal to one. Okay, so what this means is if you were to draw this original polynomial, if you were to put this on an xy plane, that it would cross, the parabola would go through 7 and 1. Okay, and we can find this out pretty simple by hand, um, just by factoring, but what if the degree was higher than 2? Because the degree of this polynomial is 2, which makes it a little bit simpler, but what if it was a larger degree, okay? So let's get rid of this and let's look at something a little more complicated, right? Good. Um, let's go something a little bit more advanced. Here you go. Now look at this function. So this function has a degree of 3, and I can't factor it. I can look at it right now and tell that it can't be factored. But you could still find the zeros, whether they be real or complex, you can find the zeros of this function. So the point of this video is to gain a starting point on how we would go about finding those zeros. And what we do is we start with this theorem. It's called the rational zeros theorem. Okay, rational zeros theorem. And I know that probably sounds kind of intimidating. Let's move this up to our title and let's have a discussion real quick. I'm actually gonna put the official definition, definition in right now. Uh, if you look at the official definition, it says that for all the p-values and the p-values are gonna be um, the factors of your constant term. And in this case, your constant term would be the number all the way at the end. This right here will be considered your constant term. And I would look at all the factors of my constant term and they call that the p-values, right? Then they say, let q, be all the factors of your leading term. Now your leading term is gonna be over here. This is your leading term. And Q is gonna be the factors of all, uh, the, all the factors of your leading term. So I'm getting to the definition here. P is gonna be the factors of your constant term and Q is gonna be the factors of your leading term. Now, the rational zero theorem says, if you take all of those values of P over Q, then you will get a list of all the possibilities of what could be a zero for this function, okay? So let me say that again. If you take a combination of all the P over Qs, then somewhere in that list, you have a possibility of finding a rational zero that could be a solution for this function. And I know that is weird as ever. My students call this, they don't call it the rational zeros theorem. No, they don't call it that. They call it finding your P's and Q's, okay? And I'm okay with them saying that because it's something, it's memorable, right? P's and Q's, P's and Q's. So let me erase what I have here. And I'm gonna start over. 
And I'm going to go through this while I'm going through the theorem, right? So let P be the factors of your constant term. The constant term is always going to be this uh, term all the way at the end that doesn't have a variable attached to it. So I'm going to set P and let that be all the factors of that last term. The last term is 6. So think about all the factors of 6. You got 1, you got 2, you got 3, you got 6. All of those numbers divide evenly into the number 6. Also, all of the negative numbers are going to go into 6 as well. So when we make this list, we want to put plus or minus in the front. Because if 1 divides into 6, also negative 1 divides into 6 as well. 2 goes into 6, negative 2 is going to go into 6. So that's why we put that plus or minus there. So P is all the factors of 6. And then we're going to let Q be all the factors of your leading term. So your leading term is 2. Well, 2x two to the third, but I'm looking at the coefficient, which is 2. So if I think about all the factors of 2, then that's just going to be 1 and 2, right? And again, I want to put the plus or minus in the front because... If 2 goes into 2, then negative 2 goes into 2 as well, okay? So this is your P's, this is your Q's. Now, your rational zeros or your possible rational zeros are going to be the combination of all of your P over Q. Now, this is the way I do this. I'm going to put the plus or minus there because that needs to be there. I'm going to take all the p values and put them over q the first q and then i'm going to take all the p values and put them over the second q watch how i do this so i have one over one that's going to give you the number one i have two over one that's going to give you the number two i have three over one that's going to give you the value three and i have six over one that gives you six. So I took all the p-values and I put them over the first q. Now let's put all the p-values over two. So let me do this in a different color so you can see the difference between the two. I'm going to take one over two. That's going to give me one half. I'm going to take two over two. Now, 2 over 2 is going to give you 1, but we already have 1 in the picture, so we don't need to write it again. That's. Next one is going to be 3 over 2. 3 over 2. I add that to the list. And then the next one will be 6 over 2. Now, 6 divided by 2 is going to give you 3, and 3 is already in the list. So this right here is a list of all the possible rational zeros that could be part of this function. This is a list. And my students call this finding your P's and Q's. You need this as like a starting point in trying to find all the zeros in the function. So let's do this again, okay? Let's do it again. We got it, we got it, we got it. Let me pick another example. I think I put some more examples on the side, yeah. So let's take a look at this one. I'm gonna zoom in. And what are we doing? We're finding our P's and Q's, right? So let me change my color back to red, okay? So our P value, the P value is all the way at the end, right? This is our P's. The number in the front is always gonna be your Q's. Okay, P's is all the way at the end, the number without the variable, and Q is always going to be the very first number. So, P, let's find all the possible or all the factors of 9. That's the number that I have all the way at the end. So, 1 goes into 9, 2, no, let's do 3. 3 goes into 9 evenly, 4, no, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So one, three, nine, those are the three numbers that go into nine evenly. They're factors of nine. And I put the plus or minus in the front. These are your P's. Now let's do the Q's. 
I'm going to put the plus or minus, and I have the number 2. The only two numbers that go into 2 evenly is 1 and 2. Okay? Now, I found my P. I found my Q. Now, I need to find my P over Q. Okay? So, I'm going to take all of my P values and put them over the first Q. And then I'm going to take all my P values and put them over the second Q. So with my red, I do 1 divided by 1. That's going to give me 1. 3 divided by 1. That's going to give you 3. 9 divided by 1. That's going to give you 9. So first one's done. Now I'm going to take all the P values and put them over 2 now. And I'm going to change the color just so you can tell the difference between the two. So I do 1. And actually, let me erase those arrows there, okay? I'm going to do 1 divided by 2. That gives you 1 half. I'm going to do 3 divided by 2. That's going to give you 3 over 2. And then I got 9 divided by 2. That gives you 9 over 2. So nothing was repeated. Good to go. All of these, this is your solution right here. Well, not solution. These are the values of the possible, possible zeros that could be in this function. So if the problem is telling you to write down the possible rational zeros of a function, this box right here, this is what they're looking for. Okay? Uh, let's do it again. Do it again and again. Um, let's do this one. Yeah. The longer the problem, the more intimidating it looks, but this one probably is going to be easier than the other ones. So here's a function right here. It's a fifth degree polynomial. Huge. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, first of all, let's label our P's and Q's. Let me change the color. So Remember, your p-value is the number all the way at the end, right? So this is your p. Uh, and your q is going to be the first number. Now, when you look at the first term, there's no number sitting in the front, but you got to remember that's understood to be a 1. So the q-value is actually 1, right? If you don't see a number there, it's 1, right? So let's do our p's and q's. So for our P, plus or minus, we got to do all the factors of 16. So that would be 1, 2 goes into 16, 3, no, we got 4, yes, 5, 6, 7, no, 8, 8 goes into 16, and then 16. So here are all our factors of the number 16, plus or minus all of these numbers. Now let's find all the factors of Q. And remember, Q is just 1, and the only number that's going to go into 1 evenly is 1. So those are your factors. So I have my P, I have my Q. Now I need to write down all of my P over Q. Now I take all the P values and I put them over Q. One divided by one is one. Two divided by one is two. Four divided by one is four. Eight divided by one is eight. 16 divided by one is 16. And then I don't have to put all the numbers over another Q because there was only one Q value. This is your final answer. So this one actually worked out a little bit easier than the other one. Okay, let's do one more. This one right here. Um, <clears throat> our p-value, the p-value is always going to be the number at the end. This is your p. And then, uh-oh, I did something. Something made a noise. Okay, then I got q's in the front. So let's find our p-value. Our p-value, our factors of p are going to be 1, 2, 3, no, 4, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 1, 2, 4, and 8. Those are all the numbers that go evenly into 8. 
They are factors of eight. Now let's find our Q. Our Q is going to be three. So all the factors of three are going to be one and three. That's it. So now let's find our P over Q. Let's find our P over Q. Let's start with taking all the P values and put them over the first Q. So one divided by one is one. 2 divided by 1 is 2. 4 divided by 1 is 4. 8 divided by 1 is 8. Okay, so I got all those values. Now I got to take these same numbers. Let me erase these arrows. I got to take the same numbers and put them over 3 now. Let me change colors just for the sake of our understanding. Now I got to take all these p values and put them over the second cube. So 1 divided by 3 is 1 third. 2 divided by 3 is 2 thirds. 4 divided by 3 is 4 thirds. And 8 divided by 3 is 8 thirds. I'm glad I'm done because I ran out of room. Here are all the possible zeros. The potential zeros that could be a solution for this function. Okay? I hope this has been helpful and I'll see you on the next video.